China once again seems to be openly meddling in the ongoing political crisis in Nepal. The Chinese envoy to Nepal has held meetings with Nepal Communist Party's top brass on multiple occasions, even as Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli is facing a revolt from within his own party. Her latest meeting was with senior NCP leader and former Prime Minister of Nepal, Jhalnath Khanal. The envoy held a 45-minute meeting with the former Prime Minister at his residence earlier today. Now, these meetings go well beyond the duties and responsibilities of a foreign envoy and this interference has been noted by the media and civil society in Nepal. Some news outlets called it China's bid to keep the NCP united. Others criticized it, calling it foreign interference in Nepal's domestic affairs. Former Deputy Prime Minister of Nepal, Kamal Thapa, called out Prime Minister Oli's hypocrisy on Twitter. He said that while Oli accused India of hatching conspiracies, it was the Chinese ambassador who was actually going around meeting senior party leaders of the government. Now, in the past one week, the Chinese envoy has met with Nepal's president, senior NCP leader Madhav Kumar Nepal and former Prime Minister Khanal. Reports indicate that during her meeting with the president, there was no foreign ministry representative present as per protocol. Now, no uh, foreign ministry representative present was present in that meeting as is the required protocol. The Chinese embassy, however, is reportedly trying to preserve the unity of the Nepali Communist Party. But this constitutes a clear violation of Nepal's sovereignty by China. Now, former Deputy Prime Minister Shreshtha Prakash also rejected this meddling by China. He said that Nepal as a sovereign country can resolve its problems by itself and rejected the idea that Nepal's politics was still dictated by foreign countries. Joining us on this broadcast is now the editor of Desh Sanchar Online, Yubraj Ghimire, is joining us live from Kathmandu. Uh, now, this is a um, uh, unique development in Nepal, isn't it, uh, Yubraj? Uh, Chinese envoy going ahead and meeting the rival leaders of K.P. Sharma Oli within the ruling Nepali Communist Party. She also met the president of Nepal earlier. Is being seen, is this being moved, being seen within Nepal as some sort of influence being directed by Beijing on the ruling Nepali Communist Party? Well, you know, like Beijing growing influence and presence in Nepal, and they are not very shy about it. They are uh, clearly demonstrating it. But unfortunately, in the context of this whole meeting, Nepal has been a country where the envoys very regularly flout the established norms and protocol in conduct of their business. Like, and for that, not only those envoys concerned, but Nepalese authorities are equally responsible because they do meet these envoys without letting the foreign ministry uh, in picture. And nothing remains in institutional memory. No press communicate notes are issued like it, it used to happen. But this is not an exception. This has been a regular feature, especially after 2005, when Nepal's politics was, Nepal's politics saw involvement of the international community in a big way. Right, uh, but uh, you know, at the same time, uh, several publications in Nepal and several media yeah. outlets in Nepal, several um, you know prominent members of the civil society are calling this a clear indication of uh, Beijing's attempt <coughs> to keep the Nepali Communist Party intact amid a massive revolt that K.P. Sharma Oli is facing within his own party. There were reports that Oli has in fact told the cabinet uh, that his party is heading towards a split. Yes, uh, we've seen that Beijing concerned at the moment, especially after April, May, when uh, you know, like Oli uh, started facing what that undercurrent of protest became very visible, and Oli's chair has been, you know, like second. A Chinese ambassador has clearly been visible. Um, in uh, from the conjecture, we can make it that you know, like she is definitely trying to save the unity of the Communist Party as well as the chair of KP Salmamoli. But again. This aberration ha would not have been possible 
without you know like uh, nepal's higher authorities being party to securing international support for their internal parties and gain right uh, nepal is also walking a tight rope isn't it uh, the relationship between nepal and india uh, the diplomatic relations at least are at its lowest point uh, meanwhile there yeah. are reports that uh, china has also gone ahead and occupied some nepali territory as well uh, so how is nepal dealing with this uh, evolving relationship with india and china well as far as the territory issue is concerned uh, there was a clarification from the government of nepal that no such territories have been occupied by chinese there was a settlement in 1961 in which certain territories were exchanged with the consent of the people and they are given a choice to be citizen there that side or this side that was a misreporting because the media concerned apologized for that but as far as nepal's relations with india you know like following this latest um, dispute over certain territorial issues concerned if there are problems and there also both sides at least have in principle said that uh, a settlement through diplomatic channel would be the best way although no dates have been fixed about it but again coming to internal politics and interference india did play a role in dictating nepal's internal politics since 2005 bringing european and american as an allies in nepal and provoking china to again in increases presence in interest in nepal it's been a very very dirty and very uh, kind of dangerous game in nepal literally making it a play playground of international forces right but in the long run what is the feeling among uh, the nepali public the nepali voters uh, can they afford a long drawn diplomatic standoff with india uh, because uh, new india and nepal have had traditional centuries uh, long uh, not only political but cultural ties as well that's true that's that's very true the police people and indian people are very close to each other the culture geography history civilization everything bounds them but <clears throat> but there have been sudden you know like um, down slides in those relations sometimes blockade sometimes other things border border issues i don't think it's a big issue because after all in two countries sharing their border these disputes would be there that you know challenge lies in there starting out based in Uh, based on evidences and uh, uh, a settlement uh, you know like understanding but uh, but when the que- and the problem arises when you don't recognize the boundary of interfering or non interfering in internal politics like china is doing the same and now <clears throat> and nepal civil society media so called intellectuals are also divided on this because they are so much affiliated that if india right. does the same thing they criticize or if china does the same thing they criticize right. other side they don't criticize so there has to be certain principled issues to govern their response so that such kind of right. problems can be sorted out yeah right mr yubraj thank you so much for joining us getting us all the updates on the latest political developments in nepal the chinese envoy has certainly met uh, a few leaders of the ruling nepali communist party and uh, which will meet uh, in under 24 hours to decide the future of prime minister kp sharma oli Me-